this is the 104th episode of Cloud Books Weekly for the last week of August, 2012. This episode is titled, 13th Factor. Cloud Books Weekly is sponsored by Arcus, your cognitive experts. I'm your host, Jason Atwood. And joining me for the 104th time, little beat. <laughs> That's been a long weekend there, Mr. Edelstein, is Justin Nelson. Justin, how you doing? Oh, why don't you kick the table? I got, uh, I, I just I got did. my sad face on. Yeah, your sad face? Well, I didn't realize it until you just said it, that this is the last week of August. <laughs> I wonder how many podcast listeners are out there going, oh, wow, this is the last week of August? Uh-huh. Yes, yeah, last got week of August. I my sad face on. Why? End of summer? Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's not my favorite. It's my third favorite season. That's pretty pathetic. No. Fall is number one. Spring is number two. Fall? Yeah, Fall. It's still warm. It's nice and cool at night. You got football, changing the seasons. It's the most pretty season. Summer. Yeah. All Any right. summer. Well, summer is over. We have an agenda. We have, uh, first up, we're going to do the blog post of the week, which is the uh, which is mine, came around to me, which is uh, Dreamforce 12 Anticipated Sessions. We won't name them all because... The then there'll be no reason to go to the blog post and read it. You found some good ones. I did find some good ones. Uh, ones I didn't even know existed. I was like, ooh, I want to go to that now. <laughs> uh, the new app exchange launches, and 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 hilarity ensues. Uh, and we have the pre 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 release or pre 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 release notes of Winter Thirteen. We both took a gander. We talk about a couple things. We'll probably do in the next one or two podcasts. We'll probably do a whole podcast about it. I'm going to pull three features out that I think are very interesting. All right, already. And then uh, Dropbox does dose. And we'll talk about that. Then we'll get our Cloud Focus app pick of the week. And boy, oh boy, you already have yours up in the dock, ready to go. And you know it's so super spectacular. About not this only one? not only have you used this one because I know you've used it, um, but you had it in advance, so that's great. And then what's what's the other super spectacular? It ties thing? in with the Winter Thirteen release. Oh yeah, good, excellent. So let's get to it. So if you haven't been, if you've been living under a rock, uh, Dreamforce is coming up. Dreamforce twelve, not the twelfth one, but it's the two thousand twelve version of Dreamforce. It's actually the 10th Dreamforce. And uh, my task of the week, as the blog master gave it to me, was to write a blog post about the anticipated ones. I took that as, I'm going to go find ones that sort of, A, I'm excited about, and B, and these are sessions. Because I really think that while the keynotes and whatever, the sessions are sort of the meat of the of the keynote. I mean, not as much for us, because we've been to so many Dreamforces. But there are a lot of sessions this year, and that's really where some of the some of the more interesting things I think happen. So I was tasked to go find some uh, my most anticipated, and so I wrote a blog post about it. It is not up because we usually post our blog posts like on Tuesday, but we're recording the blog, the uh, podcast early this week uh, because I'm going on vacation. So uh, so the the this podcast will be up on Tuesday. The blog post will come up on Wednesday or Thursday. So it'll come out. But you go to blog.arcusinc.com anyway. We follow us on Facebook or Twitter, so I don't have to do that at the end now. And you should know that it's there. So um, well, well, so pick one of the six that I oh. listed as the one that you kind of went, ooh, I didn't know about that just one. Just one? Yeah, just Can one. I pick two? No, one. Because I want there's people... two there, like, staring at me. Nah, how about one? And you can't pick your own. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to pick the first one that you listed. Okay. 21 changes that impacted SEO forever in 2012. Yeah. Because I find that to be just a really extremely interesting topic. Search always tickles my fancy. I like to see what's going on in the world of search at all times. And I feel as though there's been a lot that has impacted SEO um, forever. Is sort of a bad word to put in the title. But right. um, it was huge for, changes for now. Uh, it would be a good way to put it, and I'm excited about seeing uh, what you know. I, I, you write, you know, you're hoping that some of the concepts around site.com and app exchange. I think this is going to be more like social and um, uh, and probably keyword driven stuff, like we've seen now with Radian Six. How that really is like, you have to have an SEO mind to 
use Radiant 6 really effectively. Right. So I think it's going to be a little bit more around that. But I'm looking forward to that one. I'm going to go to that one now. Nice. Um, yeah, I'm linking to them in the aforementioned Agenda Builder. We, it's already... Actually, they updated, I think, with new fixes, so you can actually get to flagged ones now. That's good. They added a couple things. So they're listening, which is good. Um, they ought to be. Yeah, I mean, I'm just going to plug my own session, which is building your brand. That's so lame. I know, but why not? That's so lame. I've been working on it. You working on the to slides. Me, don't pick your own, and then what do you do? Pick your it's own. It's my blog post. I'm you the podcast me, master. Don't master. pick your own, so I don't. Yeah, right. And then you go ahead and pick your yeah, own. Yeah, you don't pick your own. Me, me pick my own. Lame. <laughs> you picked all these awesome sessions and you pick your own. Right. Whatever, that's cool. Go to blog.arcsync.com, read up on the other ones. The second one that he lists is really good, so go go read it. Yeah. Because the second one looks really interesting. There, there's some really, and, and for the hundreds of sessions that are out there, it is really tough. I could have picked a ton more um, but eventually I was like, no one's going to read through. If I pick 50 of my top 50 sessions um, and lots of repeats. Uh, but, yeah, there's some there's some really good ones out there. So and make sure, again, remember this year that you have to, like last year, but not the year before, you have to register for them. And if you can't get in, then I don't know if there's a waiting list or something. But basically you better go pick your sessions um, like you better have picked your hotel <laughs> because uh, it's uh, they were filling up fast. Next up is uh, something we talked about months ago because we had to do work for it, which is the launch of the new App Exchange. And there's a blog post yeah. on um, on the on the company blog, Salesforce company blog, which is blogs.salesforce.com, not blog.arcasync.com. It's blogs. Um, so there's multiple blogs. And uh, it's basically a full brand new design of the... Um, of of the uh, the app exchange with sort of it's just it's very very kind of I'm gonna call it graphical yeah graphical Apple big bold like tie like big tiles like if you go to any one of these pages like the top banner for the page is huge it's massive um, it so performs a lot better now it's too. much faster I think it's it's really really well done. Um, the nice thing, the one, I'm going to point out a couple things because, again, we knew this was coming, but now we get to sort of really talk about it. Um, there's a, They've kind of built in the, uh, like, comments now are sort of chatter, chatterized. Like, a comment or a review, uh, if you look, you can go and you can see comment, like, how many people have liked it. So it's a little bit more chatterized, and then you can sort of have a conversation about it. Um, I know in the future they're actually going to build in sort of help. So, like, they'll build... It'll, there'll be another thing, and there's this, you know, comments, and then it'll be help um, or whatever, support or something. So you'll be able to have, like, a conversation there. Uh, just really big, you know, really cool looking. There's all sorts of, like, different ways of navigating. Works great on the iPad uh, and actually where I saw it originally. Um, thoughts on it? I really like it. I think it looks good. I think, you know, I, I'm not sure it adds – too much to what the app exchange already did like as far as the browsing features they're virtually the same it looks a little prettier i guess um i haven't installed anything so i don't know if the install process oh, yeah. is the same as it used to be i'm sure it is um i like that if i click on like industry solutions and click on like financial services I could see our application on there. Which yeah, is nice. It's front and center. You hover over it. You get a nice little detail there, which is pretty neat. Um, yeah, overall, it's nice. You know, it does what it does. It's the App Exchange. I think it's a nice facelift. It needed one. Yeah. Um, after years of looking virtually the same, there's been a big uh, social push. With the commenting and with the never heard of this social thing. Well, they've also done a like a marketing campaign around it on on the Facebook. So you know, if you've noticed, Facebook has had a lot of uh, hubbaloo around the relaunch of the App Exchange. I can't remember what they were using as their tagline, but there was a tagline. It was like, um, oh man, it's escaping me now. It's like app something or other. It's escaping me. It's, it was a hashtag they were using, but whatever. It doesn't matter. Nice. It looks good. 
I like seeing our app sitting next to Schwab's app. <laughs> that makes me feel good. Yeah, so I will give you a little bit of fun behind the scenes look into being an app publisher. You, you podcast listeners, unless you're brand new, know that uh, Arcus, we're a consulting company, but and we blog a lot and we podcast. But beyond that, we have two free apps um, that uh, we call them itch scratchers. Um, one is the permissioner, which is a permission set re- um, assigning and maybe soon revoking um, application. And the other one is was named. Actually, it's gone through three names. It was originally uh, Chatter Compliance. Uh, then we were told we can't do that. And then it was Compliance for Chatter, which we had up for a year. And then under this new, actually under the, the guise of the new um, the new app exchange and of Dreamforce, they basically both somehow, it, I guess it goes to one person. So uh, that one person said, yeah, you can use the name Chatter in the name of your product. You can use it what it does, but you can't use it. So we had actually been working on uh, a new logo uh, which if you look on the uh, website, you'll see, uh, which is a big lock and it has sort of the chatter icons in it. So the idea is the archiving that stuff. So we uh, renamed it Compliance Locker, which kind of has a dual meaning, which I like. It has like, it's a locker, a place where you put things and lock them up, but also like locking things down. Um, and uh, so there you go. It's the, we, Compliance for Chatter is no longer known as Compliance for Chatter. It is the reborn brand new and hopefully never to be uh, <laughs> reborn again, uh, Compliance Locker. So check it out on the App Exchange. Um, that'd be great. Yeah, I, really nice job. Again, they did a great job rebranding. Um, I like. I just like the interface. He, he, whoever worked on this design and UI should go over to the <laughs> Agenda Builder people and uh, say, hey guys, we can help. We'll give you something, give you a way to look at your stuff. I mean, I know this is like an app store, but still, it's just so much better done. And just the way to drill around and, you know, searching and everything. It's, I mean, you know, keyword search at the top. Boy, that's that's good. That's that's what I want to do. That's what I want to do anywhere is I want to search. So great stuff. Uh, check it out. It's at uh, appexchange.com. But then when you, you know, do that, just like most places, you bump to their subdomain, which is appexchange.salesforce.com. Uh, so check it out and uh, leave a review on one of our many, uh, many places. If you want to leave a review on... Uh, Compliance Locker or the Permissioner, that'd be great. Uh, we have or install them, test them. Again, we'll be doing some stuff at the booth this year at Dreamforce. It's 334. Next up is a little bit of pre, pre, pre-release, pre-news of Winter 13. I swear this gets faster and faster. Well, it doesn't. But I swear it does. It feels like every time I turn around, there's a new release. And whereas... I guess as a, as a consultant now, I'm so in like just learning the stuff. As a as a client, I used to remember I'd be like, "Oh, it's when's the new release coming? When's the new release coming?" Um, but now it seems like every time I turn around, it's like, "Bam, there we go." Uh, so the the new notes are up. They came out I think last week. A friend of the podcast uh, sent them over, like he always does. I don't know if he sends them over before they hit the airwaves or when he gets them, but it doesn't matter. It's awesome. He sends them over, and I started reading them on my iPad the other day. You started reading them today or take a look, and uh, there's some neat stuff coming up. Yeah. What is, what's got, the stuff that just like pinged right off the top? There were three things that pinged right at me, and they okay. were all in the sales section. Sales? Yeah. What's that? Go figure. Oh, they weren't in the chatter section? Nope. Can I pick a chatter one? No, you can do whatever you want, but there were three things that pinged me right off, right off the top that yeah. were like, ooh, that's a nice improvement. Give me some. Opportunity teams enhancements. Okay. So we're en- enhancing... No longer known as sales teams. Yep. We're enhancing those, and it looked as though you have the opportunity as an admin to put field level security on opportunities for like the opportunity team level. Mm. So like a person can see this opportunity, but they can't see this field on this opportunity. Yeah, that kind of thing. I was, I was like, I, I was really digging that. That's cool. Um, another one: shared activities. On events, many events, bingo. I that's a. Uh, I tweeted that. I tweeted. I'm really excited about winter, you know. And I know that Salesforce uses Radiant Six. I actually, so side note, I tweeted, oh, winter twelve, winter thirteen looks great, fun stuff. And uh, and then Salesforce tweeted back and said, you know, well, what what do you like? I went on to the Twitter because you can't see it in the regular Twitter, but I went onto the website and I looked it up, and it was Radiant Six. So being the geek I am, I jumped into our Radiant Six version. <laughs> 
<laughs> and I tweeted back at them. <laughs> From Radiant Six. From Radiant Six. Oh, that is geeky. Uh, um, but anyway, they, I, that was what I said. Many event or many who. The end of many who. Right. The very true many who. It does change some things. They're the, changing uh, it, yeah. In the, I was actually, then I deep dove into the API to just see, and it does change the event object. Yeah. Which means we built things on the event object, which means. Secret, secret crazy things. Secret internal tools on the event. Well, we on can the tell. event attendee object, which we I think are going to have to change. I wonder if it changes. So there's the thing we built. It's not a secret because we built because uh, we use the secret is that we use uh, Salesforce. The secret is we're the only people who use the Salesforce right. calendar as their actual calendar. Yes, and we invite people to right. our calendar invites using the so, Salesforce calendar invite. Right, and which doesn't send you a. It doesn't response. send you. It doesn't send you the person who sent the invitation a notification as to whether the person has accepted or declined right you kind of have to go back into the event to look right so we built a little job that um captures event attendee responses we love our batches and so we just uh, batch it yeah we schedule job it. I'll schedule and, job it and we essentially every hour get a little notification on right. different event attendee Invites accept or decline, accept right. decline some details. So we might have to change it. I think I'm hoping we'll if the one thing that they added, if they added, I would just jump up. I didn't see it in the notes. I didn't dig in, but I feel like they're in. They're in there in the you know event objects. So it's like once you're in there, like once you have the patient open, like could you just add this little thing? Just add it. Yeah, is to send out the iCal with it. The send yeah, out do that. in the request. Send out the little ICLS, ICS, or whatever that you know email in the email that you send out please just put that in that would that would be a huge tick for everybody that would be the one thing other than t knowing which we've already solved for but the uh other one so, so the other one that i'll mention yep. i'm gonna actually save this third sales one because i'm gonna mention it when i do my pick uh is the exportable joined reports oh yes because it was a real pain to have a joined report that had more than two thousand rows of data in it but you couldn't export it, but you couldn't also then see the 2,000 rows of data. Right. So then you basically had an incomplete report. Right. Because, you know, Salesforce limits the UI to 2,000 rows. Yes. But if you export it, you can get, you know, 16,000 rows. But if you have a joined report and it has more than 2,000 rows and you can't export it, you can't use that report. It's yes, meaningless. not usable. So exporting joined reports, I think that's very helpful and useful. Put it on the board. Put that one on the board. Um, well, I'll what talk about your two or three. I'll talk about faves. one. I I read it a couple of days ago, so it's not none of it's very fresh. Um, but the one that we actually not only is coming, but we've got a pre-release version of, um, which I've been going back and forth with the um, uh, the product manager on, is uh, is there's new chatter. Can you imagine? Do you know that there's new stuff in chatter in Winter Thirteen? Go on. <laughs> So uh, there's chat chatter, you say? Chatter. What is this chatter you just ch ch up? Chatter. Um, so chatter polls is... I participated in a chatter poll yeah, this morning. It's coming It's coming winter 13 in GA, but we have a pre-release version uh, that we're playing with now. It's not so totally secret because I know he's put it up on the... You know, he's put it around, so I know it's like it's not super secret. Um, if it is, then whatever. Come talk to me. Uh, but it was cool. Like, it's a nice thing and great UI. I actually did the first one from my iPad. That was my first test. Like, if I can't do it from the iPad, not from the apps, of, of course. Of course, it doesn't even show up in the apps, but never mind. I'm sure that's coming. But you can literally just go in, chatter polls. It's another little poll thing. You click on it. It then shows, you know, put in your questions. When you put in a third one, it, it immediately gives you a fourth and so on and so forth. Hit save. People vote on it. I've already put an idea exchange idea that for it that they should have colors and, and show how many votes in each category. But nice. I mean, chatter, you know, that's like to be able to vote for stuff. You know, it's that's a nice – that is actually – that's not just a nice feature like checkbox feature. That's actually a productivity feature because it's a lot of times – it's actually something Google Wave had, Google Wave mentioned, that you could put up these polls. Now, we never got into that because we didn't have a lot of people at the time. But now we're getting to the amount of people at here at Arcus that, like, you want to get people's opinion and putting up, do you want to do A, B, or C, right, in a nice little easy way. You know, you could do a, a table and say put your X here. But this, I think this is actually good productivity, and I like it. I, I'm really uh, – I want to go to the next level. Which is what? I want to put, like, four files. 
and I want you to tell me which one you like better. Oh, just be able to attach just attach things yeah. to the to the line items. And the other thing they now oh, that we they're pre-releasing or previewing for us is um, certain websites. So I know two of them because I tested them today. Uh, Google, I mean, sorry, yeah, um, YouTube and Read Write Web. For some reason, you, Read Write Web. When you use the link, it will then do a preview. It'll basically come in and give you a preview of that website's like image, yeah. right? Which they didn't have before. That's YouTube, new. they did. YouTube, they had, right? But I'm saying now it's built, and they, ha- now they listed it's for off websites. Like, but they listed like 16 websites. I don't know if that's just like the ones they've tested, or is it, or is it every website? Well, uh, remember we're in this early adopter yeah. program thing, so it's probably just ones that they've yeah. made Maybe, sure yeah, work. Made sure, but I think I mean it's basically what happens on Twitter and fa- well, Facebook, LinkedIn, all those places, Google, Google Plus, when you just when you see a Google result, well, you but have when you that post thing. a Google Plus, it'll try to pull in the image. Oh, yeah. Yeah, Facebook yeah. does that. Too. Facebook does that. So I think it's that same technology. Right. Um, nice, really nice. I, I mean, sure. these are stuff that makes Shatter just the only thing that my gripe is now always that that they sort of flow so slowly to the to the ends, like to the Chatter, like Chatter mess and message is still not in the iPhone, i the iPad apps. Right. right, and so like here we are putting new stuff. That's like that thing is so far behind. You know, I'm like, ah, I don't want to. You know, do I want to even use that app anymore? Chatter polls don't show up in there, so that's like it's already. I know that's probably gonna come, but you know, those apps always sit so far behind it. They do. Um, so anyway, Winter Thirteen. We're on different release cycles too. So we'll do another one. Maybe maybe I'll read yeah, it on we my need vacation. To deep dive, and then we do another. Should one. we make a promise that when we come back, we'll do a whole Winter Thirteen? Sure. Okay. Um, and then last up, before we get to the pick of the week, just a little thing that hit on my radar. I went and did it this morning, tweeted about it. So I thought it's a it's it's a thing that happened, but something I, I would actually like to see more places do, which is Dropbox uh, now has a – actually, it's a beta version. You can't just go turn it on. you got to download their new beta version of their software to turn it on. Um, two-factor authentication. Um, and we've kind of talked about this a little bit. We came from that company that shall be named where security was huge. And, you know, with people like uh, that guy, the Gizmodo guy who got hacked, his whole entire thing got hacked um, because from social engineering, stuff like two-factor authentication really helps. So what that means is you have, you know, you always have sort of a factor, which is your, you know, password. Now it's always like it's your password and then it's something else. And then usually the system is smart enough to know that you have it's seeing you from a place it doesn't recognize, and it says it's time for you not just to give me your password, which maybe you know someone's stolen, but I need you to now give me another factor, another thing I know about you, a second thing I know about you. So in this world, um, what that does, and some banks do it with like a picture that you've already picked, yep. and you have to identify the picture. Salesforce sort of does it. It doesn't with though. the email verification code. It, yeah, so it kind of does it. Kinda. Kinda, but once. I, yeah, I guess it's it is. Same, it's the same, same concept. concept, right? Yeah, same concept. But anyway, Drop, Dropbox. Well, in fact, Salesforce, a big feature in Summer Twelve that no one really paid attention to. You can now turn that on for your cell phone, right? Which is nice because when you're authenticating on a chatter on your iPhone, it can send that. If it's, and it'll say, "I need you to authenticate." Instead of sending you an email, it can text you, which will then show up right on your phone. So it's like that's a nice feature. Uh, anyway, Dropbox does it, and what's cool about it is that they used Google Authenticator, which is the Google version of Two Factor, which you use for Google Apps. They use that app, so it's the same app. Now, just to yeah. not confuse people, Dropbox is using the Google Authenticator yes, app. Yes, yes. Right, we were talking about Salesforce. Sorry, sorry. So, so Dropbox is using Google's two-factor authentication app that basically randomizes numbers every 60 seconds. I think that is the coolest thing in the world. Uh, Yeah. It used to be, like, 10 years ago, you'd have this... Fob. Fob thing that... Or, like, not even a fob. It looked like a little mini calculator thing. Oh, those were brutal. And it was like, you'd have to carry it around with you to, like, log in from anywhere. Oh. And now you've just got this app on your phone. Right. And we use it because we're Google Apps users. Yep. And anytime I go somewhere different or use somebody else's computer to log into my Gmail or Google Docs, it asks me for a code. Yeah. Yep. And all I got to do is pull out my phone, Yep. open that app, and it gives me a six-digit randomized code. I pop it in. I hit verify. And yep. it's like sci-fi. 
Yeah. And it's really cool. Yeah, it is It is very cool. And I guess, not that big of a, but globally that, that Dropbox now uses that app. So, And the way to set it up is easy. You just type the app. You scan a barcode that brings up on the screen. Yes, that's it's, exactly yeah, right. You just, it's great. You, you scan a little like VR code or it's, whatever it is. It's it's very smart. QR, QR yeah. code. QR code. VR. VR is virtual, uh, virtual something. something. QR. Code. QR code, which is I have no idea. Well, I think that's when you uh, that's when you just blow it up when you go uh, when you go viral. Mm. You go viral with go that. Go viral with the QR code. Just go viral. What does QR actually stand for? I might be stupid. Here. Quality research. No, it's um. I thought QR was. I'm gonna look it up. All right, you look it up. Why don't we Why don't we get off? Anyway, I I love this. This needs to happen more quick and more. Response. As we put stuff into um. All right, I'll make it quick. No, as no, we, that's what it stands for quick response i said i'll make it quick oh okay who's on first so a- as we get into just this cycle like it just makes another factor and when you start to put all this sensitive information you know especially dropbox where you're just dropping files out th- now then we can get the trinity throw it on evernote put two factor on evernote and i'll be happy that'd be great anyway uh so let's get to our speaking of awesome picks and <laughs> two factor nothingness let's get to our cloud folks have pick of the week let's do that so I'm up, yeah? Yeah, you've got, uh, yeah, 104 right, so, times. You're still first. So here's the thing. I think I've picked this thing before. Okay? I'm going to start out by saying I think I've picked this But before. didn't you look at the sheet that has every pick in the planet? I was going to, but then I didn't. <laughs> I picked the, so even I the believe, week that I'm giving believe, you credit for actually doing what you're supposed to do in advance, you then show that you actually didn't do it in advance? I believe I've already picked this thing. And I'm, okay. I'm just going to verify that I have. Yes, I have. But I picked it a while ago. When did you pick it? Mm, March of, of this, this year. year. All right, but so not, I've now so used it in the same. So in the same calendar year. I want to. I want to bring it up now because I've used it, and uh, at that point it was like new, and I said, "Oh, I'm just going to pick this new app exchange thing." Now I've used it, and I like it, and <laughs> I want to tell people more about it. Okay. All right. So, so wait, this I'm is doubling. I'm wait, doubling up. But this is this is going forward. This is the way. This is your app pick. This is your Reapp pick of the week, Re-app. or Cloud Focus repick of the week. Right, this it, has a different this, hashtag. This is the Cloud Focus repick of the week, where you could go back over every one of your picks, all those ones I made fun of you for not actually trying, and you go back and you could repick them all. Right, I could. Uh, like there's but literally this one. This so one. This I'm is your problem. You don't have any problems with picks anymore. You have fifty to sixty picks, and you can just go picks, repick. I can just keep going back. Just keep repick well, them. Well, let me tell you a little bit more about Cirrus right. Insights. All right, what is it? All right. So, well, first off, you can if go I didn't look at it that on podcast, the new. You can go look at it on the new App Exchange. Nice. It's, it's they've got nice new branding on the new App Exchange. Great. It's Gmail integration for Salesforce. Okay. Okay. It's it's not server side. It's it's based in the browser. So it's a browser plugin that you're installing on Chrome or um, I've been using it on Chrome. I think it works in Chrome and Firefox. Okay. So. It essentially allows you to do a lot of the things that Outlook users are able to do with Salesforce, but in the Gmail interface. So I'm getting there. Okay. I'm getting Good. there. You he, looked at me, he, and I'm he, getting he there. He saw me. If you were watching the video of this, you would have saw my, my reaction was, oh, right, there's that. And you're getting Let there. me get there. Okay. So as an Outlook user, you know, someone, you want to send an email. You click and you want it associated as an activity in Salesforce, you click send an ad. Using Cirrus Insights, you're in Gmail, you're composing a Gmail, you can click send an ad. Right. And it will also allow you to associate it to a thing. Right. A what. So right. you can associate it to an opportunity or an account or a project or a case or a whatever. So right? you're saying they're going to have some work to do when uh, many who gets totally rolled out, but anywho. Maybe. Yeah. But um, anyway, it also does this very interesting thing uh, that why I repicked this and it, it well one because I've been using it and two because in winter 13 Salesforce will be rolling out as part of the Outlook edition or Salesforce for Outlook yeah. a sidebar right and that sidebar is going to include data from Salesforce so when yep. you get an email from a contact or a lead it's going to pop some information yep. about them in a little sidebar like their contact record, their previous activities, things right. of that nature. Cirrus Insights does this for you right. inside of Gmail. It pulls up a very nice contextual sidebar that pulls up their contact record 
any opportunities, any cases, yep. activity history, open activities, really useful information. And you can create new things from right within the interface. So I can create a new task. I can create a new case. I can create new opportunity, cool. things like that. If somebody sends me an email and it can't find them, I can find them or I can create a lead or a contact from right within the interface. Nice. Very interesting. Um, they also, on their roadmap, have a contact and calendar sync. S safe Harbor. Well, this is not really. I mean, it's on their own listing. S safe Harbor. Safe Harbor. I've also talked to them about this. Safe Harbor. Coming soon is a sync for a Google Calendar oh. and Google Contacts. Oh, you just got my attention. Yeah, I know I did. Oh, wow. Yeah. You just told me something I didn't know. So this product First time ever. <laughs> is going to have a really nice suite of syncing between Google and Salesforce. Calendar? Calendar and contacts. contacts. So exactly what Aperio Calendar Sync does. That's right. But, but with all this other stuff. With all this other stuff. Which, which I think Aperio has as well. They have a whole suite that does this. It's like called... Like, yeah, they like built this thing. I feel like this is very much... This is for every man. With, yeah. I, I almost feel like they might be the same thing. Oh, you really think this is like a co-brand, rebrand, white brand, white label? Might be. All right. Uh, but anyway, free 30-day trial. I like sets it. Sets up in 30 seconds. They're not lying. It sets up in 30 seconds. You're OAuthing into Salesforce from Gmail. Yeah. So you're downloading a little plugin. It runs. It installs. You then log in to your Salesforce from Gmail, and it just starts working. So a question for you. All right, give me the price now. I have a question for you. Uh, so it's $9 a user a month. You can have okay. one user use it. You can have all your users use it. There's volume pricing. It's also, if you want to pay by the year, it's $99 a user a year. So that's mm -hmm. two free months, I guess. Yep. Or one free month. Yeah, one free month. Um, it's also 50% off for nonprofit. So a couple things. Go on. One, Go on. Yeah, it's good. Um, what is the – oh, percentage-wise, would this get you off of using mail? I've started to try to use Gmail more. Because of this? Because of this. And it's hard for me because mail has all my other accounts in it. Yeah. And I'm so used to mail, and I'm really good with key – key cut like shortcuts key, and like shortcuts, needing to commands, learn new yeah. key commands for gmail which i know exist and i'm just i really just love mail like right. apple mail is a really great program yeah. i really am very used to it like the flagging the this the that right very very good with key commands like i said so it it's gonna take a lot to get me off of mail right. but i have started to have gmail open what kind of screws it up is then I've got them open in two different places and like they'll get to Gmail first and then they'll get to mail and then like right. the read state like they're they're not as in sync as you think they are right. if you were to have them both open at the exact it's same time. It's not instant, right. Plus I've got like the iChat open and the Gmail has the chat in it so like there's chatting going on all oh, over the place. Yeah. So it's been a little, you know, I've, I've made the commitment to open up Gmail every day and okay. have that open with this product actually in mind. Okay. Because it is really useful when you get an email that comes in and you can see like, oh, okay, this is I was thinking a true test person. would be, and again, I I think a true test would be just go into your go into your mail settings on, on Apple's mail and just turn off your Arcus account. I could do that. And then just leave and just try that. And I was thinking maybe I'd take the challenge and I'll just turn it off for like a week. And just sit only in Gmail because I wouldn't be able to get it through right. And I could do that, and maybe we, a couple of us could do it, and just really try. Because again, I'd love the functionality. The problem is, if I loved it, then I wouldn't want to give up because I don't really want to give up mail. But whatever. Right. Well, one of um, our associates so, who just joined us, um, not in the room physically, not in the room, but no. she is a Gmail user. Right. She came to us from the world of PC, so yes. she's not like very sorry. She she was given a Mac, yes. and she's not all like Apple Mail's the greatest thing in the world. She loves Gmail. She uses right. Gmail, so she installed the thing. Yeah. And she's using Gmail every day, and she's like she likes it yeah. a lot. So it's really good. I think I really think uh, the partner who shall remain nameless yes. would really get a lot out of it because D dumb sales guy. Well, yeah, because it's got <laughs> a lot of that information that he'd probably want to see at his fingertips, right? And creating a lead and from an email, right? Like that kind of thing, yeah. 
Yeah, no, I, I, I love the functionality. Again, I would pay, it, that was gonna say, it's like $99 a year. I, you know, I immediately think, oh, that's not bad. But then I think I pay $50 a year for, for Google, for Google Mail, plus Drive, plus Calendar, plus, so it always feels like to me, whenever I get one of those things, it's like I try to compare it to something like, and it's like, wait, I pay $50 for Google, and this is double the price of Google, and it's just sort of an add-on to Google. It's a little strange. I think it's well-priced. You know, I'd love to see it in the, I don't know if they scale up, you know, obviously you're buying it for an enterprise, but um, cool, very cool. Yeah, um, yeah. All right, so my pick of the week is something that I too thought I had picked this. I searched for it before because I'm diligent like that, and I had not picked it. I think I've talked about it, but I haven't picked it, and I picked it because it's getting very close to coming. <laughs> so I was, and I'm getting very excited, and they posted a new video about it the other day. First of all, it was the number one kick up to a while ago. It was the number one Kickstarter. So for all of you who don't know, Kickstarter is a website um, that does... Um, that does backing of things, and I, I'm basically addicted to Kickstarter. Like, I, I think I back one thing a week. I almost, like, I've backed so many things, and only one of them's not been done. So, like, three months later, you get something. So, anyway, it's like crowdsourcing of money. You get, or crowdsourcing a product. You build these, they put up these things, they put up videos, and then you, you go and you say, I want to back it with this much. And then it's usually product related, so you get something, and then there's different levels. Now they've gotten very smart where they have limited edition, so they'll say, you, only zero of 22 in this or zero of 100 in this pre whatever so it kind of gets people to kind of get going on it fast anyway this one I thought you picked this I it's not you it. definitely talked to me about I've it. talked about it but I haven't picked it Interesting. I'm picking it because it's actually becoming something you can order now uh, it's not just Kickstarter so anyway it just blew out like Kickstarter this was the biggest one. now there's been another one that's what it, we talked about it because it blew out right we were like this was the biggest thing ever on Kickstarter so right. we talked about it right and and so it's called Pebble it's the e-paper watch for iPhone and Android and what it is is a you know very lightweight watch with a you know a paper um, it's called e-paper display so the same display that's on sort of uh, Kindles so that means it's nice. very 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 low you know it can be seen in sunlight yeah, very, very quick um, and very um, very low battery, right? It's going to use Bluetooth four again, very low battery, and basically it's a watch face. So it's a digital watch face, and you know that's all cool. You the, getting this or what? I, oh yeah, it's coming soon. Like I already bought bought one. I backed it back. How many did you buy? Like three? No, I only did one on this one. Oh okay. Um, but what it is is it. So then the, that's not that cool. What's cool is that it, it has Bluetooth and it talks to. Not only devices like your iPhone. So the example is you're sitting here. I'm sitting here with you, and I get a text on my phone, or like well, you always get texts on you behind you on your phone. Yeah, my instead phone's of, always behind me. Instead of looking at it, you just look down at your watch, and it would have the text right there. Can I reply? No, you can't reply. Can I talk into it with Siri? Is it's, there a Siri API. There's no Siri API. I don't, don't like this. Yeah. I don't know. Anyway, I don't know or about this thing. apps can talk to it. So oh. GPS apps, any other app, you, there's an API. So then any app on your iPhone can then send information. Here's an example: Dark Sky. Mm. Dark Sky can send a notification. I want Dark Sky to tell me that it's raining on my watch. That's right. Yeah. It could. So it's very very cool. It's 150 bucks. I think I backed it for less because again it was a thing. What color um, did you get? Oh, black, black. Of course, yeah. By so, the way, speaking of, um, I know we're. I'm just. You just hit me with something that like you're rat holing. I'm rat holing for. Where's a second. the rat hole music? The geolocation stuff. Did you yes. see that in the Winter 13? I did. The geolocation briefly. fields for yeah. querying and stuff of that nature. Interesting. Very interesting. Very. All right. Um, <laughs> so anyway, it's Pebble. It's called the Pebble. It's at getpebble.com. It was on Kickstarter. It's 150 bucks. You can actually pre-order one now because now they're like in full production. Um, the thing is, there was a bunch of other ones that I wanted to pick, but I'm I basically am doing my Christmas shopping over Kickstarter. So now when I look at it, I'm like, <laughs> are they going to have? How do you know if that's going to? Ha- they tell you when it's going to be in production. They tell you estimated shipping dates. Oh, okay. So like I've been backing ones all summer that are going to come in the that's fall. That's a smart thing to do. I. I Yes. I should do that. Yeah, it's great. Anyway, um, so getpebble.com. Uh, it is 150 bucks. a couple different colors. Really cool. And I think this is this is the future of like having devices talk to each other smartly and make do something. All right. Well, that wraps up the podcast. Remember to go to blog.arcasync.com. Subscribe by RSS. Remember, we'll be at Dreamforce, booth 334. 
Um, we just got our booth graphics approved. Remember, go to Facebook, facebook.com slash ArcaSync. We're on Google+. We're in the Dreamforce portal group, so remember to go in there where we will, as soon as as soon as soon polls get posted in there, we'll be able to do some polling and fun stuff, um, which is great. And then remember to subscribe in iTunes, which is the place du jour to get your podcast or one of the many apps we've discussed at nauseum, like Instacast. And until next week, we'll see you then. For Jake and Justin, Cloud Focus Weekly, enjoy those cloudy days. Mm-hmm.